So in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a drawer with Flutter, and I'll take it up a notch and use the drawer header with the drawer item and an icon in that drawer item. And when we press on that or tap on it, we'll go to an activity widget or an activity or place. We'll route to it. Okay, so let's get started. So I've already got my Flutter app generated. It's the basic bare bones application. So in that, I'm going to go to the home page and it's, let's look at that, my homepage state, and that's created um, because it's a stateful widget. You can see here, and then we extend the state of the homepage, and in that state is restored when we return to it, and it's uh, taken care of in the back end. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna look for the scaffolding. This defines the attributes for this activity or place. And what I want to do is see what the attributes are that I can add to the behavior. And that is, here we go, a drawer. So I've already talked about this in one video, but I didn't use the drawer header or drawer item. So I'll make a drawer and, whoops, we got a little bit of spacing issue there, but uh, we'll go up to the start of the method and we'll instantiate our drawer. So that means new drawer. And okay, so I've instantiated my new drawer. Let's just see if it works. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the hot reload. And on reload, we should have a drawer, but Mr. Liney or the hamburger icon didn't show up, but I can go over to the left side and drag in. And there we go, there's a drawer. And then in this case, the hamburger icon is already up and running. So there we go, we got our drawer. So now what can we do with our drawer? Let's add the header to it. And to do that, it takes a child, and I want to add a list view to it. And so I'll work this backwards and go view var list view. We'll create a new list view equals new list view. Okay, so now I've created a list view, and what does it take? It takes a, view, uh, a variety of attributes. So I'm going to feed it some children. So I'll just name this uh, children. Uh, okay, so var children, and that is going to be a list, a list of items, and so we'll make, or an array, so we'll go header, we'll, we'll create a header for that list, and we'll go var, and that's going to be header equals new drawer header. So here's the pre, the widget that's already been created, takes care of all the behavior, and you don't have to recreate it. And it's a stateless widget, doesn't have a mutable or a changeable state. And so what can we give it? So I'll give it a child, and that will be, let's let's say, let's make it a text, uh, text, let's go header text. And then we'll name, we'll create the header text equals new text, and we'll name it header for simplicity. So there we go, we'll do the hot reload. And over here, we can just click on the header. And there we go, we have the header is already updated. So let's say if I put an S on it and I just hit hot reload, it automatically changes without even changing the state or refreshing that doesn't collapse and expand. It's really easy to modify and see your changes almost or instantly. Okay, so now I've had, I have a header. Let's add an item to it. So let's call this item one. And in this item one, we'll create a new drawer item. And so this drawer item takes a, a variety of attributes and then I got a child here. So I'll give it, uh, let's say a text to item one text. And so for, for item one, text we'll make a new text text widget for it and we'll name it sandy shores okay so i'm naming it sandy shores because i got a sandbox here so <laughs> i think it's funny but you might not okay so we got sandy shores let's just update it and see if sandy shores all right it shows up now let's give it an icon so we can go and add the icon attribute and so we have Let's call this item one icon. And if we add item one icon equals new icon, and it takes an icon, you can give it a material design icons from the icons library. 
All right, so let's choose settings because that's a fun icon. This is a gear. So we reload, and there we go. And if I click on it, I don't have any material design uh, ripple effect yet. So I want to add a pressed, uh, some pressed behavior, on tap behavior. And so let's look. It has on pressed. So I use control space to do the auto assist to provide the attributes so that I can change. And so I'm going to make it a private method. So I'm going to go on press item one on pressed. That's what I'll name the private method. And so I'll go control alt enter to uh, auto help me auto assist creating the method. And it creates a method at the bottom when I select create method. So now I have a method. So I can actually process that. Let's just re hot reload and you should be able to see the ripple effect um, go on in the shores. All right, there's the ripple effect when I tap it or press it. I, on tap is actually in the super class and then when you, it's delegated to on pressed here. Okay, so now I have an item. Now I wanna navigate to a new place or a new activity. So let's go up. I got my app and it has some scaffolding of a material app. And here's our home. And if we um, enter and we can look at the attributes we can add to this application and it's routes. So I'll create a new routes variable and add a comma for the end for tailing. And I'll go up to the, the build context and I'll go var routes equals, and I don't know what to give it yet. Let's just control click or command click up to the class or member and we can see that it's a map of a string and widget builder. So let's go back to our main.dart and we'll define our map here. So now we have a map of routes, but before we can give it a route, we have to actually make a place to do that. So I'm gonna copy this class, my, my map, because this is, I'm gonna do, make a create a stateless widget and I'm gonna name it Sandy Shores, Sandy Shores. So now I have a Sandy Shores, it's a stateless widget and needs an override. So we will auto create the override by, by hitting Alt Enter and then a suggestion and then just creates overrides. So basically I'm gonna return a very simple widget. I'm not gonna cover doing fancy stuff here in this video. You can look forward to other videos and I'll help, I'll show how to do that. But in this one, we'll just do a simple widget. We'll go return, new center, because I'll put it in the center, some text in the center. So new, and then I need a child. I'm gonna give it a child of new text. And I'm doing this in line. You could do it, extract it, and and have the, the, the reference um, fall into it. Okay, so I'm going to new text and what am I going to call this? You've landed. Oh, I'm going to give it a double quote because I want to use a single quote. So you've landed on the sandy shores. Okay, so that so if all goes well, it should change context and sit, provide this text on the screen of the phone or mobile device. So now I've created my sandy shores. I'm going to give it a route name and I'm going to just go static string route name and do this a, a global variable or class variable here so I can use it elsewhere in the application without too much effort and we'll call it Sandy Shores. Okay so now I have uh, my route name and I'll go down to my map because now I have to register this route with the application scaffolding and if I Okay, so I'm gonna. It takes a string for the or for the key on the map. So that means I'm gonna give it the Sandy Shores dot route name, and then okay. So the value is it's gonna be a method. So our expression with uh, or one expression in this method. So it gives it a context. So it's a build context. Build context and expression fat arrow here and then we'll go new sandy shores okay so did i create oops i got a syntax error there so i could do a comma and add another item in the list but i'm not going to do that yet looks like i can keep the comma i'm still getting used to dart because i come from java but it's really similar it's not bad 
Ah, I actually really like it. So let's look at the next item to do. So let's review. So I've created a stateless widget. A stateful widget is the other type, and I won't cover that in this video. So, so Sandy Shores, and I gave it a route name of Sandy Shores, and it's going to create a simple centered text widget on the screen. So if I click, which is the next function, I want to navigate to that widget. So I can use the navigator dot, and then I need to pop it because I want to close the the sidebar here and navigate to the new activity. So I'm going to go push, pop and push named because it's going to take a string of the route name. So pop and push name and I'm going to do use the global context and then Sandy Shores, the static string and we'll route to that. So assuming all works right, I can hit the, the reload here and go over and actually click on Sandy Shores and there I go. I went to the new activity. You've landed on the sandy shores. Right on. So that works. So simply put, let's review what I just did. So in the application, let's hit the back button. It's a little wider at the home page, so we'll review this too. So let's look at the scaffolding for this page of this widget. So if I look at the superclass, my home page, which is a stateful widget, it keeps its state. I won't talk about that. So my state is defined in this state widget, and it builds the widget with this scaffolding. This scaffolding, I gave it a drawer. It also has other attributes like the floating action bar at the bottom. This drawer is instantiated with a child of list view, which has children. Its children are a header. Let's look at the header here. A header at the top with some simple text. Okay, and then the item one. So let, here's the header. It has a child of header text. And we look at the drawer item, which is the next item on the children list. And that has an item one, an attribute of a child of text, an icon, which is a material icon. And we have a handler, which delegates to on pressed method. And if we command click on that, we should go to the method and we use the navigator pop and push name with the global context and we feed it the string route name. There we go. So that was really easy to actually create the, the header and the sandy shores. I can't wait to try other things. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll share some more videos in the future. You can subscribe to get those into your streams. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you later.